Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. I remember working with a client who, when she came to me, had just come out of a very emotionally abusive marriage. And, you know, she was new with the dating game. And most of, you know, what everybody knows about me, whenever I work with a client as a therapist, it's really important to know someone's journey, including their upbringing. Well, when we had our first session, my client disclosed how she grew up in a home where feelings weren't allowed to be expressed. She was constantly criticized and was expected to deal with problems by fixing them. So she grew up carrying on that role of the caretaker and the people pleaser and never expressing how she felt or creating boundaries for herself. So fast forward to her relationships, she ended up attracting, lo and behold, narcissistic and sociopathic men who would ultimately control her and including the guy she ended up marrying. So Without having any dating experience, she quickly went online after her marriage and ended and it continued to attract this toxic like interactions, experiences over and over, over again. It was like a broken record. And when we started first working together, it was really important to look at her patterns. And when I work with people, I always go into people's profiles to help them move the needle a little bit. And also with the vetting process. And while I was in her Bumble account, I noticed something that jumped out right away with this guy that she had been talking to. And she told me, Kimmy, things are going really well. It's heating up with this guy. And you know, they've been writing back and forth. They were almost like pen pals for a while. And this is what I saw. One thing that jumped out was like the conversation and the relationship was moving really fast, almost, you know, too fast. The other thing I saw was that he kept breaking promises of seeing one another, you know, and she would ask, you know, can we do a FaceTime? Can we do video? He always had an excuse. There was somehow like, you know, something that would suddenly come up and he was always traveling. And right before a call would be about to happen, he would somehow be unavailable. He also would draw her in with gifts and affirmation of love and desire to be with her because he's never felt a connection so strong before. And then he pulled the doozy. He asked to borrow some money because he, of course, lost his credit card and that he would pay her back. You know, other signs were there, but thank goodness we were working together as I had to let her know that these were really kind of red flags and signs of a romance fraud and that he was scamming her. And she was shocked and in disbelief because she said, well, but it's so real. And she kind of continued on even after I warned her. But then it became really clear after making plans to meet her and he never showed up. It was definitely the wake up call she needed. And after working together, we, you know, really started working on her confidence and I had to help her see her self-worth. I had to help her see how to set boundaries. I had to help her see how to express how she felt. And after doing a complete makeover inside and out, and it did start with the outside because she was really, you know, giving her power away even with the way she looked. Um, Once we got new pictures, new wardrobe, feeling good about herself. And then of course we did the inner work as a therapist, super important, but it was all working together where she started feeling empowered. And as we kind of went on and she learned how to date smarter, not harder, I'm happy to say she attracted this great new man in her life and who now treats her like a queen. Here's the thing. Romance fraud is unfortunately more common than not, and it's particularly heartbreaking. I mean, romance scams mostly target victims who may be emotionally vulnerable, have lower self-esteem, and a strong need to be connected and loved. Also, a lot of these fraudulent love interactions 
are unfortunately with sociopaths who are great at seducing you and knowing these vulnerabilities. And sociopaths tend to be extremely charming. So you get hooked. They're like chameleons and they're able to figure out exactly what you want and need in a relationship. And they will seduce you and then ultimately hurt you and take advantage of you. Someone with this kind of personality disorder is always on the hunt for new victims and people to take advantage of. So with me today to help me talk more about this love fraud and signs while dating is a woman with an incredible journey and is now out to help others avoid these toxic situations. She is the creator of lovefraud.com, a website that teaches people to recognize and recover from sociopaths. She is the author of eight books, eight, eight books, including Red Flags of Love Fraud, She learned about sociopaths the hard way by marrying one and tells the whole outrageous story in her first book, Love Fraud. She has also appeared on investigation discovery TV shows, ABC News 2020, My Life is a Lifetime Movie, Ricky Lake Show, and she has been interviewed for multiple radio shows, print articles, and online articles And now, of course, the charisma quotient. She is happily remarried, proving that recovery from betrayal is possible. Welcome, Donna Anderson. Hi, Kimmy. I'm so glad to be here. Oh, my God. I'm so glad um, that you are here and just like chiming in with this really, really important topic. You know, I've I've talked a lot about just, you know, toxic relationships and, you know, obviously as a therapist, it's something that I'm very familiar with, but not in a way that I think we're going to have a conversation to talk about today because you have such a like interesting story and it's very inspiring how you help people with, you know, all the stuff that you've written. I'd love, love to hear just more about your story. And I know you, I know you have a long story, but (laughs) I'd love to hear it. Well, um, yes, I started writing about sociopaths because of my up close and personal experience uh, with my ex-husband. He took a quarter million dollars from me. He cheated with at least six different women during our two and a half year relationship. He had a child with one of those women. And then 10 days after I left him, not 10 days after we divorced, 10 days after I left him, he married the mother of the child, which was the second time he committed bigamy. Now, my head was spinning. And as you can imagine, I needed therapy. (laughs) So (laughs) I was telling my therapist about his outrageous betrayals. And she said, he sounds like a sociopath. And I'm like, sociopath, what's that? And that's how I got into it. I started researching it and my husband absolutely did fit the bill. In fact, later on he was diagnosed. And um, so ever since then, I realized that I did have an important story to tell. And I wanted to warn people about the personality disordered individuals who live among us. So that's why I created my website, lovefraud.com. Wow. It's so important too, because, you know, like you've, you've been through it, which is like different than like people who maybe studied it. Right. And so I'd love for you to share, you know, I mean, obviously like looking back, there were signs, right? Like, I mean, now, you know, hindsight's always 2020, but like when you were first dating and you were out there, did you recognize the signs or, or at least now reflecting on it? Like, what were they? Well, everything that you just said, my husband, um, he was magnetic. He was charming. He was larger than life. He claimed that he was a Hollywood script writer and also had served in special forces uh, during the Vietnam War, um, all of which turned out to be fake. In fact, um, he, he actually had been pretending to be a war hero for like 20 years. Uh, but he he didn't just tell it to me, he told it to everybody. I mean, he joined the local Vietnam Veterans Association and was a keynote speaker at a Memorial Day parade. So, I mean, he just really played the part. Um, and what he did was exactly what you said. He swept me off my feet. Uh, he was making plans right away. He you know, wanted to move everything along very quickly. Uh, it was a very sexual relationship. And it was just all the different things that 
now I know are blatant red flags. But my experience was back in 1996, which was when I met him. And and, and I mean, internet dating didn't even have pictures in those days. You oh, know? my God. So, right. Yeah. So it was a, a long time ago and there was no Google. You couldn't check anybody out. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the time, there was like no information available at all. And that's what's really changed ever since I went through it is that now at least people have the opportunity to learn and have the opportunity to try and check people out and research them. Uh, None of that was available at the time. Um, But so that's good because there's more awareness now and there's more people who at least get the idea that there are predators on the internet. And so more people are being cautious, but people are still getting caught. Yeah. As a young dater, like when you had met him, did you have other dating experiences or, or did you kind of meet him young and like, Oh no, no, I was 40 years old. You know, I, oh. I've been dating for 20 years. So, uh. Uh, and, and that's actually what happened because in my case, um, I hadn't been married. I wanted to be married. I wanted to have a family. So I had that biological clock ticking and, you know, I was making good money. I was running a business. And so he took one look at me and said, bingo, you know, here's a nice, mm-hmm. fat, juicy target. Um, and essentially I was the cash cow. He, he wanted my money. Yeah. Oh. Were there some traits of him that were similar to like the other guys you dated or was he so different that that's, that was the hook? You know what I mean? Cause like it could go either way. One of the things about him and I, and there's actually research to back this up, but he was mm-hmm. very confident. I mean, he was commanding. He, he was, you know, very sure of himself and, I was a very successful woman. I had been running my own business for like already 20 years at that point. You know, I graduated from college with honors and it was smart and, and responsible and accomplished. And one of the things that happens is that women who are professional and accomplished often have a hard time getting a date, you know, yeah. because a lot of guys are afraid, uh, you know, they, they don't feel confident themselves to approach someone like that. Well, who has plenty of confidence? It's the sociopaths. You know, so, you know, they, and what happens is, um, and this is, this has actually been shown by research. Uh, a colleague of mine had did some research Uh, for a book called Women Who Love Psychopaths. And they actually estimated what the traits were that made women, they they weren't able to do similar research with men, but the traits that made women vulnerable to sociopaths. And it's not what you would expect. Hmm. Um, The first trait is extroversion. Uh, you know, people who were um, loved life, loved to accomplish things or loved excitement. Um, And the reason for that is because the sociopaths themselves are extroverted and the extroversion becomes the point of connection between the uh, target and the sociopath. Um, another trait is that the women are invested in relationships in that you know, they're, they want special relationships, they want, um, they're willing to put effort into it. And then the other one is that they're cooperative, like the women who um, get involved with sociopaths are in like the 99th percentile as far as cooperation is concerned. Mm. And they have to be, you know, to try and put up with all the garbage that the, the sociopaths throw at them. So these are women who are up for a challenge. They think that they can make it work. And I can tell you from my experience, I mean, I've collected more than 10,000 cases of people who have been involved with sociopaths, Mm -hmm. Uh, not all dating relationships, but most of them. Mm -hmm. And I hear from accomplished professional people all the time. So it's not necessarily that it's low self-esteem because it's actually the extroversion that makes them vulnerable. That's fascinating. And it's probably different with like different, you know, diagnoses too. Like, and, and to your point, there, there are certain meeting points, you know, like where it's like, it could go either way. Cause I've seen people who are more introverted and then they get attracted to narcissists, but that narcissists aren't always sociopaths, right? Like, like we can go on and on about the diagnoses. Um, 
but what I was curious about, was there other research? I love this research, by the way, Don, this is fascinating. <laughs> um, were there other kinds of research done around this that like, you know, women listening to this and even men for that matter, that, you know, kind of things to look for? Well, I could tell you the research that I did um, because, Mm -hmm. you know, my first book, which is called Red Flags of Love Fraud, Mm -hmm. that was based on surveys of love fraud readers. All my books are based on surveys of love love fraud readers. So I have a lot of data uh, that I've been able to collect about what goes on in these relationships. And um, what I did with the Red Flags of Love Fraud is uh, I had an inkling of uh, what the most common traits would be because of what I experienced and what I kept hearing from um, my readers. Um, So I I tested it. I did a survey and uh, collected a lot of information. And the the key objective of that survey was to figure out what the warning signs are. And so those are the 10 red flags that I came up with. And number one is what the first thing that you said was charisma and charm. Uh, This is what makes sociopaths. uh, This is most of them have this trait. I mean, there there are some who are not charismatic or or charming Mm -hmm. uh, because I do hear about that. But that's like the number one thing that uh, the survey respondents reported. And then the next thing that they reported was what I call the sudden soulmate. And what that means is that, you know, the sociopath, you meet this person and you feel like you've found the person you've been waiting for all your life. And there's a reason Mm -hmm. for that. And the reason is because the sociopath studies you, figures out what you're looking for, and then makes himself or herself into that person. So consequently, you feel like you've just, uh, you know, met the perfect person. Like, oh my God, he knows me. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Right. right. Um, Then the next thing is uh, the sexual magnetism. You know, we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Um, All sociopaths, both male and female, have very high levels of testosterone, uh, which makes them want to pursue uh, mating relationships. And uh, plus they have lots of stamina and uh, no inhibitions. So the sex can be really exciting. Uh, And then there's the the trait of love bombing. And that term, you know, has become very common now. It wasn't when I fell into this thing. Um, But love bombing, of course, is when they shower you with affection and attention and want to be with you all the time. And Mm -hmm. they're making plans to, you know, date like six months out and and, uh, just really pouring it on. Now, of course, the problem is that they all sound pretty good. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, wait, what's wrong with this list? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. I'm like, sign me up. Right. Right. And, um, you know, but I mean, who doesn't want to be with someone who's charming and sexy and thinks you're wonderful. And my soulmate too. Exactly. Exactly. So there's a few other traits that are also important to realize. Um, an important one is that sociopaths, always blame other people for everything that goes wrong in their life. Nothing is ever their fault. Uh, It's always, you know, their stupid boss or their crazy ex or something like that. And then another one, of course, is that they lie um, fluently. Um, But the lies, the problem with lies is that you don't know that they're lying until like after the fact. So that one can be hard to spot. And then another Mm -hmm. one that is easy to spot is what we call the pity play. And what that means is that uh, they try to make you feel sorry for them. They're uh, appealing to your sympathy. So so these are um, some of the red flags of love fraud. There's a few more. But the idea is that you kind of need to see the whole pattern. You know, if somebody is, you know, uh, sexy and magnetic and charismatic and Mm -hmm. and and thinks you're wonderful, that doesn't mean they're a sociopath. But if you start to see all that, plus the lying, blaming, and and pity play, you know, then you really need to pay attention. Wow. This is so, oh, this is so good, Donna. Like, cause I can hear people like listening and, you know, like you said, there, there are people who have some of these characteristics, but like when it, it's piled up like this, this is, this is that, I mean, the big ginormous red flag, <laughs> you know, that's waving right in front of you. And, you know, I wonder, and, and this is something that I see a lot and I'm just curious about like your journey and maybe like the research you've done is how do you get past then moving forward, the fear of repeating, like attracting this, because once you taste it, 
to your point, some of this is pretty tasty. Like, it, and it, it's like, oh, but even though he was a sociopath, I want more of that. Like, you know what I mean? And then a lot of people find themselves getting attracted to sociopaths or these kind of like, you know, love frauds over and over and over again. Like, how do you, how do you get past that fear of, of doing that? The key is emotional recovery. Yeah. You know, because what sociopaths do is they figure out what your vulnerability is. And then that's where they set your hook. That's where they set their hook in order to get you. Mm -hmm. Um, And obviously, um, you know, people who are looking for a relationship have a vulnerability in that they want a relationship, (laughs) you know? Right. Um, Anything can be a vulnerability. Anything that you want is a vulnerability. And typically what has happened is that um, what sociopaths do is latch on to these old wounds that we have within us um, because the vulnerability came from somewhere. Often it's a wound. It it can be, as you mentioned uh, earlier, from um, a dysfunctional family when you're growing up, uh, Mm -hmm. different things like your your client had experienced. Many, many people who have been in that situation have these really deep wounds from the experience. And so what happens is they, they continue to attract people like this because the wounds are still inside them festering. And sociopaths just seem to have this radar for this pain and this woundedness. And they come and they, they're going to take it all away and they're going to make all your pain go away and they're going to make mm-hmm. you happy. And so what, ha- what needs to happen is that once you extricate yourself from one of these situations, um, the key is no contact. I mean, you have to get out and 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 block all contact with this person because that's what gives you the space to allow your your brain to unravel from from the way it's gotten all twisted up with these people that's that's why it's so important it's it's like an addiction in fact these relationships are highly addictive oh yeah so, yeah so you have to treat it like an addiction and that means going cold turkey and and stopping any involvement with the person and then what you need to do is process the pain and process the wounds. And what that means is allowing yourself to actually feel uh, many of these wounds that we haven't permitted ourselves to feel and Mm. and really get in there and, you know, allow it to come up, allow yourself to cry, allow yourself to experience anger or or however it comes out. Um, It's messy. Uh, It takes time, but it's absolutely worth it because, you know, once you get all this stuff out of your system, it, it, it frees you for better experiences. So recovery is absolutely possible. Um, we do need to make a commitment in order to do it, but it's, it's worth the trouble. And I can say from my own experience, as you mentioned, when you read my bio, mm-hmm. uh, about a year and a half after I divorced my ex, I met a man and we've been together for 20 years and married mm-hmm. for 17 and I, I take it he's not a sociopath. He is not. <laughs> yeah. Not. Yeah. Oh, well, because, and this was part of my question too, that I love what you said about the recovery piece. What I find often too with my clients is that, you know, they might be in a state of recovery, but then it, it, it can also go too far where then they get scared to get back out there because then they're going online and they'll see like a little bit of like a pink flag and they're like, oh, there he is again, you know, because so the fear, you know, sets in and then they may not want to date. Like, how did you get back out there? How did you get over that? I knew it wasn't going to happen again. Mm. And plus I did the recovery work. I mean, yeah. you know, as yeah, I mean, you did the work, <laughs> I did the work, I did yeah. the work. And, uh, I mean, it was ugly. Uh, it scared everybody. Well, I didn't do it in front of everybody, just the dog and it scared the dog, uh, you know, but, oh um, gosh. yeah, it, it's, it's very important. But the other thing to understand is that here's how you protect yourself from sociopaths. It's, it's a three-step process. First, you have to know that they exist. Now, this is actually the hard part. I can't tell you how many times people have said to me, I never knew people like this existed. You know, well, they do. <laughs> and so you need to know that. Secondly, you need to know the warning signs, you know, which we talked about previously. But the third and most important step is to listen to your intuition. You know, 
Our intuition evolved over millennia to protect us from predators. So mm-hmm. if we ever get a gut feeling or you know the hair going back on our neck or even just a, a, a little unease, that's your warning. And that's that's what you need to pay attention to. And you know, our bodies will tell us, our instincts will tell us. So knowing that, you know, when, once you once you recover and you get to the point where you can hear your instincts and pay attention to them then you can have the confidence to go out in the world because you know that your instincts are going to tell you when somebody is not safe. And so that's the place that you want to get to. Yeah. You know, what I love about what you said too, it part of what you're saying is also trusting yourself. And and that's not easy to do when you attracted something. Cause I know that a lot of people like they beat themselves up when they it's like, how, how did this happen to me? Like, how was I duped? You know, like, and so then that trust factor of just being able to be like a quote unquote good picker that, you know, a lot of people question that because as they come to me, that that's a big thing for a lot of people. So I love that you're highlighting the intuition part and really the trust, you know, but it does take work to do that, you know, to be able to, and, and it takes practice. So I, I, you know, I was curious when you met your guy, like how, how was he different? How did it feel? Like, I think that it's good for people to hear that, the positive. I'll tell you a story. I love it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Please do. So um, I met him in a bar. So that was good. You know, meet in person right away rather than being online. And um, of course, now I was, how old was I at this point? I guess I was 44. I think I was. Wait, can yeah. I just pause there, Donna? I need, I need you listening to, to hear this first part of the story, Donna. I'm just laughing because a lot of, a lot of people come to me and say, how can I meet somebody at a bar at, you know, at this age? And I love that you did not meet a sociopath at a bar. So I just want to highlight that. Continue. <laughs> okay. Okay. So anyhow, I was about 44 and my, um, the guy, he's, he's older than me, um, about 10 years, uh-huh. um, but he didn't look it at all. He was very handsome. Um, and we closed the bar, which I hadn't done in at least five years at that point. So, and, um, but anyway, so he, um, he, he made a date. And so we went out to dinner, went to a very nice restaurant and he had recently, well, his, his wife had recently asked for a divorce. So, I mean, I didn't break it up. I, you know, he had already, they'd already separated. And, um, so I said, okay, well, I guess I'll tell my story. So I told him the story and he just about fell out of the banquette at the restaurant, you know, when I'm talking about what happened, uh, but he thought it was terrible that this guy, you know, took all my money and, uh, it was, you know, was a con artist and everything like that. And, and at this point I had finally had to give up on the idea that I would ever get any of that money back. So, um, we had a very nice time. And then the second date, which was a few weeks later, he showed up and he walked up the steps of my porch with some papers in his hand and it was his tax return. He wanted to show me his tax return so that to prove that he made his own money. Wow. Wow. So ladies, ask for tax returns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Well, that's, I mean, yeah, that makes a statement. And then like his personality, was he really different? He's magnetic also. I mean, I like that kind of guy. Ah. I always, I always told, I always called them live wires, uh, you uh-huh. know, just uh, exciting and, and funny and personable, but he also my my ex husband could be very rude, and mm-hmm. my my new husband Terry was never rude. You know, he he yeah. always do the right thing to do and and the right thing to say. Um, but he was trustworthy and he was loving and he did things for me and and he kept his promises and and didn't make excuses. So I mean, all the things. It was kind of interesting because years before, oh gosh, 
um, at least a good 10 or 15 years before I met Terry. Uh, in fact, before I met my ex-husband, I, I had been writing in a journal and I wrote down a list of the traits that I wanted and mm-hmm. uh, you know, somebody intelligent and exciting and honest and and, and smart and, and uh, athletic. And after the sociopath, when I met Terry and I went back and looked at the list, he was everything on the list. Wow. Wow. That is cool. (laughs) Well, and you know, the other thing that you're saying too, that's really important is the consistency of somebody's personality. Cause like, while the sociopath has a lot of the traits and, and exciting elements, you know, that was on your list, it, 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 then it gets taken away with other things, you know, like being rude and lying and all those other things. And so, you know, when you come across somebody who means what they say and say what they mean and, and they're consistent over time and they're kind and they're nice. They can still have all these other traits like being charismatic and you can still feel like they're your soulmate and the sexual stuff still could be there. So, I mean, that I, you're like an inspiration of hope for a lot of people listening to this. Cause I think a lot of times people, it's like, they think it's one or the other, either I have to have a boring person you know, or a sociopath. And it, and it's not that. There are good people who have these beautiful traits. Yes, yes. The key is if you're feeling confused mm-hmm. in the relationship, that's a huge warning sign that something is amiss. You know, where, mm. where, you, where you don't know what the status is, you don't know if you're really in a relationship or something along those lines, that's a big warning sign. And um, I mean, maybe not necessarily a warning sign that the person is disordered, but maybe it's not a good fit. And uh, I never felt that way, you know, with Terry, my husband. He's, you know, we we just it was great. Yeah, it should be easy, and that's how exactly. it should feel. Yeah. Donna, In fact, I wrote I wrote an article entitled "That Real Love Is." Oh, easy. really? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Real love is easy. It is. It is. Yet. Yeah somehow we make it more complicated because when we get in these complex situation, it, it, it does feel like that. So, but when you do the work, quite honestly, then you really know what to look for and what you deserve. And, and, and then it does happen. It will be easy. So Donna, thank you. Do you have any parting words of wisdom that you want to share and also like, let everyone know how they can find your books. I know like you have so much out there. Yeah. Um, I'd love for people to visit my website, which is uh, called lovefraud.com. And uh, my newest book, which has just come out, is called Senior Sociopaths, How to Recognize and Escape Lifelong Abusers. And again, there's a lot of data in this book. Um, The main point of that book is that once somebody has one of these personality disorders, Mm -hmm. they do not change. They do not recover. And people need to be aware of that because you could spend, you could waste years trying to get, get the person help or fix them or hope that they'll grow out of it. And it's not going to happen. So I wanted to document that and people need to be aware of that. And if they think they're in a situation like this, I, I would invite people to use the information to make the best decision for you. Yeah. Donna, thank you so much. And and thank you for just, you know, using your own experiences to help others. It's just, it's so powerful. And I know that this episode is going to help a lot of people. So thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yes. And thank you for joining me today. You listening, this has been the Charisma Quotient and I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you're feeling kind of low and you were listening to this episode and saying, oh, wow, I think I keep attracting those toxic relationships, hop on a call with me and we'll talk it through. We'll talk about ways maybe perhaps you can break that pattern. Just click the link you see in the show notes to schedule that. And who knows, this one call could change the entire course of your life. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now. <music>